been the voices of uh, Donald Duck. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> I've been the voices of Lucky the Leprechaun from Lucky Charm Cereal. They're magically delicious. <laughs> and I've been the voice of Starscream from Transformers. Decepticons, this is Starscream. Make for the rendezvous point. The All Spark will soon be ours. <laughs> And most recently, you would have heard me as, like Uncle Shagworthy from Multiverses. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the VO Dojo 21 Questions. We're here with my friend and colleague, Daniel Ross, who you might know as one of the voices of Donald Duck, among many, many other amazing characters uh, that he has brought to life. Um, he is one of the most passionate and talented and um, enthusiastic people I know in the business. And so we're really excited to have you here, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited <laughs> to be here and chatting with you. Yeah. Um, you ready to start the 21 questions? No. <laughs> I mean, yes. I mean, yes. Awesome. So here we go. Um, what's your one word check in for today? My one word check in for today. Uh, I, I, I don't know the significance of that, uh, but I like to say yes. 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 <laughs> word, yes. That's Am I going to get up and, and do the laundry and do the dishes? Yes. Am I going to get up and mail my auditions? Yes. Am I going to book something today? Yes. That's my word. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Where are you from? Uh, originally, I'm from Maryland, um, here in the United States of America. And uh, yeah, I moved here to Los Angeles uh, eight years ago. I can't even believe it's been that long. Uh, I packed up my car and I drove cross country to take a shot in the voiceover world. And here we are. Uh, mm. But yeah, I grew up uh, in the suburbs of D.C. and Baltimore. If you if you drew a line from D.C. and Baltimore straight, like that's kind of where I live. So I was in between both cities and called both my homes. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, so I, I'm into politics and and old day uh, crab seasoning. <laughs> the two go together. Right. That's right. <laughs> Excellent. And you're in LA now. That's great. Correct. Well, I kind of gave away a little hint, but what would we know your voice from? Oh, I don't know. Honestly, most most people these days know me from TikTok, which I think is uh, both oh, hilarious great. and awesome at the same time. Um, but yeah, I, I've been the voices of uh, Donald Duck. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> I've been the voices of Lucky the Leprechaun from Lucky Charm Cereal. They're magically delicious. <laughs> and I've been the voice of Starscream from Transformers. Decepticons, this is Starscream. Make for the rendezvous point. The All Spark will soon be ours. <laughs> and most recently, you would have heard me as, like Uncle Shagworthy from Multiverses. Oh my gosh. Doinks. <laughs> <laughs> so you do you have in your contract that you only do iconic characters then like that just kind of seems to be the thing um and and let me be honest it's one of the joys that that I really have about the voiceover industry because I got into this I'm sure I'm um preempting one of your questions here but I I got into the industry and into voiceover by watching Saturday morning cartoons and being planted in front of my TV you know just absorbing all these iconic characters uh, not just from like cartoons, but I mean, wrestling, like uh, people remember WWF. I mean, everything was an iconic character and that's what I grew up around. So the fact that as an adult, now I'm doing these voiceovers and doing some of these iconic characters that I grew up with, uh, it boggles my mind. It <laughs> boggles my mind. It's so cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah. No, you've and been I in do this thing. I do this thing, Tish, where when I when I take on a new character that's been established, I get an empty pop figure case because uh, I know who's going in here. But I usually tease my my friends on uh, TikTok and Instagram and be like, "Hey, something's coming, everybody." That's cool. <laughs> I, I think I think the action figure is one of the milestones of like, "Aha! Uh -huh, I've got an action figure." <laughs> exactly. So that, exactly. I, I, know that, I know that feeling. That's great. No, what you, is it? An action figure? A ride at like a theme park? Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of the other things that I've heard people say? Uh, 
Oh gosh, their favorite animals. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> For me, it's a it's a Chihuahua, which kind of works with the Donald Duck talk. <laughs> <laughs> a whole nother thing another thing yeah. now you've been in LA for eight years but how long have you been doing voiceover um I've been doing voiceover I would say since 2005 2006 somewhere around there um I I joined the union as a as a union performer back in 2004 and mm -hmm. my I don't know. I've always done silly voices and cartoon characters and impressions. And I've loved the performing arts ever since I was little. And I just didn't realize I was a voice actor until much later in life. So uh, when it was too I late to get a shot it. for it. <laughs> it's, it's totally true. So I'm a huge Transformers fan. If anybody can see in the background, I am just surrounded by Transformers. I have Cybertronian ink on me. I'm a huge Transformers fan. So I would go to Transformer conventions and I would meet the voice actors who would, you know, had worked on the shows. And what I quickly realized after meeting the person behind the, the veneer of awesome was they're like me. These people are like me. They're they're strange. They're quirky. They're humble. They're generous. They're they're honest. They're just these wonderful people. And it was like I found my tribe. Oh. And once I had that epiphany, it was like, this is what I think I want to do. I, I want to I want to do the voice thing. I think that would be fun. That's very, very cool. Who's your current team who helps you do all that you do? Um, okay, so I'm currently represented by the amazing team at CESD. Mm -hmm. uh, Kathy Lizio, Sam Frischman, Bo Oliver, um, my, my entire team, Aaron, uh, they're, they're wonderful. And um, yeah, they've really helped me <laughs> navigate this crazy industry uh, that we that we enjoy out here. Not to mention my support system. Uh, I have my best friend Justin Tim Payne, who I've made films with in the past, uh, uh, produced movies with, and uh, he he's my backbone. He's my rock. When I when I need to talk about uh, Hollywood problems, you know, like oh, I'm just so tired. I've been booking all week. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, who do I complain to? Who do I vent to about that kind yeah, of stuff? So no, it's a real we'll thing. It's a real thing as you get uh, as as the as your levels and your your problems change. Uh, yeah, it's it's a real thing. I, I would say they're challenges. I don't want to say they're problems because right, there's right, such right. good problems to have. <laughs> but yeah, as you grow and you develop, things change. You have different obstacles in your way and different things you know, different adversity to overcome. So yeah, things change as, as you go. But I, I have to also mention uh, my, my good friend, Debbie Derryberry, the voice of Jimmy Neutron, who has been my, one of my best friends and mentors, David Sobolov, David Kay, all people who have encouraged me to uh, uh, do this strange uh, thing that we do now <laughs> as a yeah. job. Well, that's that's what we say at the dojo all the time. It's always just you, but you never do it alone. So that's, that's right. That's, that's right. Cool. Um, technically, on the tech side, what's your current setup? Oh my gosh! And I almost forgot to mention Brittany, uh, my commercial agent, Brittany at CESD. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Brittany. I love you. Um, my current setup. So I work from a closet, a uh, a sound treated closet. It just happens to be the perfect space for me. And uh, I have an Audio Technica 3035. I have um, an SSL2 uh, 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 interface. Um, yeah, I've got my laptop for editing, and I've got my man cave filled with toys. <laughs> the key ingredient. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I love I love asking this question because you know you have in in terms of voiceover, you've reached some of the highest echelons of the dreams of a voiceover actor and. It doesn't matter where you do it, you get it, you get it done. And I think that's, that's a great thing for everyone to know. Um, you. We, you started to tell a little bit about your VO origin story, but um, how did how did you get started? You know, how does one get started? I think you just kind of fall into it. Um, again, part of my origin story was rooted in mischief as a young kid doing impressions and prank phone calls and you know, uh, uh, tormenting my parents in that way. Um, gosh, and my dad, who's a doctor, he has, he would have his little medical uh, recording devices. So I used to take those, I would sneak those away and I would do my prank phone calls on speakerphone back in the day. 
And then he would he would go and listen to him and he'd come back to me and be like, I was going to listen for my research and I heard you doing a prank phone call. And I'd be like, sorry. <laughs> I think I had recorded over his stuff once and he was very upset. Um, but uh, yeah, so so impressions and cartoons, making other people laugh, living in that space of of joy, I think is something that I just, I, I always wanted to remain in. And so uh, around 2004, 2005, when I had started as a, as a professional actor, I was doing movies, I was, you know, an extra, a professional extra, I was a stand-in, and then I started producing and making my own content, because mm. uh, I figured, you know, nobody's gonna just give it to me, I have to make my own opportunities. Mm. Um, so yeah, from there, I, I landed a big role in the Transformers video game back in 2007 as Starscream, who was the main villain for that iteration of the game. And that was huge. That got me on the convention circuit. And again, meeting other voice actors, all of whom were encouraging me and said, you got to be in LA. You got to be doing the thing. What are you doing out in Maryland? Mm. And I was working in retail at the time, uh, you know, it's retail management and, and uh, dealing with all the Karens. And it was just, uh, <laughs> it was one iteration of my life. If we think of things in the multiverse, that's one thing that I could have been at some point. Oh, I'm a store manager at Target. <laughs> um, in this iteration, I, I happen to be a voice actor, but I love the performing arts. I love telling stories. I, I love affecting people positively or negatively. If through my creation, you feel that's really special and gratifying for me. Mm -hmm. So the medium doesn't necessarily matter, but I really love this one. Yeah. You know, how, how did you book that first video game from Maryland? I'm intrigued. <laughs> so I had to think a little bit outside the box because I didn't have a fancy manager or agent. I was just a, a huge Transformers fan that was desperate to marry his hobby with his craft. And um, so what I did is I, I, uh, partnered with some of my friends in the Transformers fandom who were artists to help me create a comic book. And I sent this comic book featuring myself in a story with the Transformers to Steven Spielberg and to Michael Bay. I, you know, it was fully self-aggrandizing and silly, but it was the only thing I could think of to be noticed. Um, someone had told me a long time ago that Elijah Wood uh, filmed himself out in the woods reciting lines from Lord of the Rings for Peter Jackson as his kind of audition for, for Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, I can't do anything with Transformers. I don't have a budget for CGI or puppets or <laughs> you know anything. So a comic book, oh my gosh, I can ship it. It's simple, it's compact, it tells the story. Anyways, uh, Spielberg and Michael Bay, they got it. I got an audition. I was literally at a Toys R Us looking at Transformers when the person called and said, hey, you booked the audition. And I'm like, what? <laughs> oh my God, that is the best uh, story ever. So I, I, that's all I wanted. I just wanted an audition. I didn't even care if I booked it or not. I just wanted to say I did it. I did it for myself. I thought outside the box. I did something I've never done before. And here we are. Now, I didn't get a role in the movie, but then Activision called me and said, hey, you want to be in the video games? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's... Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's another rule of the dojo. The first rule of the dojo is know what you want, ask for it. People will give it to you if you allow. And you just you like embodied all of that. Oh, my gosh. That's. And that's... remember, the worst thing that anybody can say is no. Yeah. So yeah. might as well try. Exactly. Oh my gosh, that was like the best 21 answer questions. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think are the three top ingredients in your success? In my success? Um, persistence, for sure. You have to be in this for the long run, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, Persistence, patience, you have to be patient with yourself. You have to understand that you're in a learning process and you're not gonna get there right away. Um, you have to speak kindly to yourself, offer yourself grace, offer yourself downtime, take care of yourself. Patience, definitely the second one. The third one, 
I think passion. If we're going with the P words, yeah, like, yeah, catchy. Yeah, yeah, I hope you love my PPP. <laughs> it's on me. Um, yeah, passion. If I didn't love what I do, I don't know that I would do it. There is so much rejection. There is so much, uh, you know, business behind the scenes. There's a lot of ego in the entertainment industry. There's a lot of different factors that don't necessarily uh, occur in your normal, like, I have a nine to five job kind of life. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're not passionate about something, you're not going to be able to overcome those obstacles and those hurdles. And if I wasn't passionate about this, if I didn't know putting myself in the place of the person in front of the TV, watching those cartoons, if I didn't remember those feelings and what they stirred inside of me to then become an adult and, and try to give those feelings back to other people, that, that's what I'm passionate about. That's what I want to do. If I didn't have that, I wouldn't be doing this. That's Maybe something else. Fantastic. So persistence, patience, and passion. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> and I'm I think, writing this down. This is going in. <laughs> note to self. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think you might have um might have answered what was your big break because because it sounds like having Steven Spielberg say yes is kind of a big break. <laughs> it was it was absolutely tremendous. And I'll tell you this, I was working at Blockbuster at the time uh, <laughs> when I was recording this, and we had the game for for rent and for sale in my store. So it gave me such a tickle when people would rent it and take it out. Oh, and cool. I'd be like, oh, that's me in there. And the few people that I did say, hey, that's my voice in there, they'd be like, yeah, okay, huh, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't get it. Uh, just let me rent this. Like <laughs> they didn't understand. Right, so right, right. Hilarious. Well, and that that's also a testament of the patience and persistence part, right? Because you got the big break, but it wasn't like woohoo. It, it was, and, and you were still making a living doing another thing and kept your passion going, which I think it is was a one off. It was a one off thing, and it was the biggest thing that had ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. But. The the onus was on me to create something from it. And so yeah. when the opportunity was right in my life, I moved here to Los Angeles to really take a shot at it and do it the right way and follow what my peers and mentors have been telling me to do. And that really was the key. And within a year, we booked Lucky the Leprechaun. We booked a Donald Duck. And the rest of it was just, mm -hmm. you know, I guess history at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so powerful. Uh, at the dojo, we call it having the helicopter come. Only you made a call to make sure that the helicopter was uh, like you. You made you you made sure that you knew knew where the helicopter was supposed to come to bring you there. But say the the top of the mountain is a sustained successful career like you've created your gorgeous fantastic life you know career that is affects people and and brings people joy around the world. Um, wherever you are from sea level to summit, when the helicopter comes, get on it, and then no, you're not a mountaineer, right? You've got exactly. to go back and do, you You went and you were like, okay, I'm here. What else do I need to do? And how Right do when the success hits, that's mountain? when you need to work even harder. Mm -hmm. that's, when, that, that's when you say, this is the beginning. When you feel like you've come to the end, no, 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 this is the beginning. This yeah. is the beginning of all the work. And I, I would also just, throw in there that you have to really trust your gut too when it comes to the things that you want to do in life and when um when i moved to la i was working overnights at target i was managing the logistics process all the trucks coming in the freight going out you know pushing the product the employees i was exhausted i was working you know 10 p.m until 8 a.m every single day and eventually when i started booking you know some different things i said okay i think my gut is telling me now is the time to start moving away from the day job. Now it's time to start, you know, floating in, in untested waters and see what happens. So I was going to drive for Lyft part time. And the day that I left Target after 10 years of working for that for that great company that I enjoyed working for, um, I'm driving off the parking lot at 8 a.m. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I'm excited. And my agent calls at 8 a.m. and says, you booked lucky. And I said, I got lucky. I got lucky. <laughs> thinking, this is a sign. This is a sign that I trusted uh -huh. my gut. And my gut was saying, now is the right time to jump. 
and here's the net. Here's the net to meet me. So <laughs> trust your instincts, trust your gut. That is so amazing and so magical how shum, shum, oh my God. The entire drive home, I'm like, I got lucky. <laughs> oh my gosh that's that's brilliant 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 and we just organically answered what was your big break how long how long from starting vo to making it full time although although what what what, what really was because you talked about like did you leave target and then and then lucky was net then the campaign that made it so you didn't have to have another job I mean, I still had to maintain a job. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, voiceover is amazing, but unless you're doing it full time, it's hard to earn a living. It can be very hard to earn a living. So I needed to supplement. It was just, you know, one job, a, a sparse number of jobs that started to come in. Um, but again, it was my gut telling me this feels good. This feels right. I feel momentum. I don't feel you know, just little things being thrown my way. I feel like I'm taking steps towards mm -hmm. something bigger. So yeah. when I recognized that, that's when I said, okay, let's take the leap. Let's make yeah. a jump. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really, really, really important because, you know, when, when you've done this for a long time, right, you forget like, oh yeah, no, there were those years when I did this and this and this, and then it started happening. So just, you know, just for people who are starting, like, yeah, it's like, would, so would you say that it was five years before it, from when you started to working like total VO full time? So I'm just, I'm going to say I got very lucky. I mm -hmm. got very, very lucky because I, I took an educated gamble when I moved to Los Angeles in the first place, specifically for voiceover, because I knew that I had some I had some ability, I had some trained ability, and I knew that I could focus that into something that would be fruitful. I just didn't know to what capacity or how, I just had to trust myself and my abilities. So it wasn't just like, hey, I'm just gonna take a shot at LA and see what happens. I made a concerted decision after thinking about it and leveraging what I felt my talents were to be able to be successful. And that gamble proved, again, fruitful. Um, but when I moved here, I said, okay, the first six months of my life, I'm not auditioning. I'm not seeking it out. I am literally just getting my lay of the land. I, I'm getting a bed. I'm getting furniture, uh, you know, just all the things that you need to be able to survive and live. Uh, do I have enough toilet paper? Like, yeah, <laughs> all those things. And after that, I said, okay, then once I'm situated, I'm going to go full steam trying to get an agent, trying to get an agent and trying to get work, trying to get auditions. And uh, a lovely lady named Michaela Hicks uh, took a chance mm -hmm. on me from Solid Talent at the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she she saw something and uh, and we went to the races from there. <laughs> That's fantastic. You get to know the people who are doing the things. Yeah, right. it's, it's fantastic. That's right. Yeah. What are you proudest of in your voiceover career, Daniel? What am I proudest of? I think um, for myself, I'm very proud that I was able to overcome the things that I've overcome in my life and still have the capacity to energize others, to inspire others, to stoke other people's imagination. Um, I want other people to have the same feelings that I do when I go to see a movie and I escape and I'm, you know, in this magical place where any kind of story can be can be there. Any anything that you maybe won't even experience in your own waking life, you can feel, you can see. I love those. I love the possibility. So to be in a position to offer that to somebody else through my craft, through my job is truly astounding to me. And it's something I'm grateful for every day. It's so powerful. And be <clears throat> just before you were sharing a little bit about being the voice of Donald and being one of the few voices of Donald. And I think it's just a testament to you and how, um, how you just defined the bigger picture that's beyond. You know, so many people that I get to talk to with Dojo, like, I want to be a Disney princess or I want to be a da da da. And you have been, and yet that is not the first thing that you just said. Um, you For just me, it's very much about uh, 
like you said, the bigger picture. It's not the 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 job. It's not the the myopic view of okay, I got some work. It's what does this mean? What does this mean for the bigger picture? What am I stepping into? What's the history? You know, for Donald Duck specifically, uh, you know, he's a legacy character, a, a character that is passed down from generation to generation, and and I'm so fortunate and grateful to be the third person to have done that for Disney officially. Um, the fans drove me in that respect because I would go into the studio and I'm thinking to myself, it can't be subpar. There's over 80 years of history and, and pretext to this character. When people listen, they want to hear something very specific because it's going to connect with something inside of them. I want that connection to be pure. I want when they hear my work to connect with that flawlessly and not say, oh, that voice sounds different. The voice doesn't that's not what I had in my childhood. I don't want people to think that. I want them to escape and and revel in that joy. So for Donald in particular, that was a massive undertaking and learning the character and being nervous. I was green behind the ears when I when I first started as as Donald and here I am recording multiple days a week on multiple episodes with producers and writers and studio execs and it was intimidating. It was really intimidating. And I wanted to get it right so badly. And I'll never forget, there was a moment where I just felt like I could step back and Donald was just kind of talking through me. All the all the, the, the wheels turning and bells whistling of you got to do this and you got to make this sound and this sound and this and this works with this. All of that died down and it was just Donald is speaking through me and I just kind of went, whoa. <laughs> Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> it was just, it was seamless and easy. And I'll never forget that moment. That was yeah. really special to me. That's amazing. It's amazing. You kind of touched on this, but here's here's the next question. What is your biggest fear or challenge? What's your biggest fear or challenge in your voiceover career? Um, I doubt myself sometimes. Hmm. You know, I think we all have imposter syndrome. It doesn't go away when you're when you're in the theater and you're working a play and you're in the wings waiting for your moment to get on stage. You've got the butterflies. Mm -hmm. You're thinking to yourself, man, I hope I don't forget my lines. I hope I memorized everything. I hope I've got my blocking down. I hope I I hope I hope I hope and you get there and you just it works and it just happens and everything's fine. And you're like, why did I even doubt myself? That happens to me very frequently. And I giggle at this point because I'm like, just trust yourself, just trust yourself. Right. Recently, I had a character that I took on that I was not confident in. And mm -hmm. it was one of those things where I got brought on to it and I had to learn the voice as I'm going. And I was so nervous, I was so nervous. I almost felt like I, I don't even wanna do this. I'm so, I, I feel oppressed by how much I don't think I can do this. Wow. And I got to the session and I rocked it and I walked away going, what was the big deal? What right. was the big deal, Daniel? Come on. <laughs> for this. You've trained for years. You've worked on this. You're good. You're good. So, yeah, yeah I would say imposter syndrome is definitely uh, one of those yeah. things. And, you know, that's another reason why this question is in there because it doesn't <laughs> go away. We just figure it out and keep on going. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Uh, I'm an introvert, definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I like to say I'm an extroverted introvert because I love people and I love being with people, but I definitely need to recharge my batteries. Uh, I can be very private at times. I, I, I tend not to socialize very often because it just takes so much out of me. <laughs> and, and honestly, a, a different side of things is, you know, with TikTok and with having over a million followers over there, I'm contacted by fans and, you know, people casually online all the time. So I'm constantly like talking to people and in other people's periphery. And that can be overwhelming sometimes. So I definitely need to take my time to decompress, do some mm -hmm. self-care, uh, you know, and uh, just take take some time for myself. Yeah, that's that's super cool. I think it's always a blend. Like this, this work requires that we be a blend of of both of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you could do VO from anywhere in the world, where would it be? Ooh, anywhere in the world. Hmm. Probably from a mountaintop somewhere. 
Mm-hmm. With internet. <laughs> with, with internet. You said anywhere in the world. So they must have it. No, no, no. Exactly. Like or something. Uh, uh, I, yeah, like a mountain. So, like, I would, can you imagine? Just go with me on this adventure. Can you imagine <laughs> being on a mountaintop, peeking out of the clouds, and nothing around you but clouds and other mountains peeking out, the sunset or the sunrise, and, and doing like a like a video game voice, like doing a video game session and just coming out to that magnificence. <laughs> I feel like it would feed the performance in some way. So I don't know, the top of the Alps or, awesome. or uh, you know, if, I, if I'm sticking to home, you know, the top of uh, the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> Excellent. Not Excellent. in a cave. I wouldn't want to be in a cave. Good, good, good. <laughs> Uh, oh, my levels aren't good. Hold on. Let me check my stalagmites. <laughs> stalagmites, stalagmites. <laughs> That's hilarious. What would you say your VO motto is? Um, my motto in general is it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. Mm. You have to make some noise. You can't be afraid to ask for the things that you want. Again, the worst thing anybody can say is no, but you got to be the squeaky wheel. You got to be the one to pipe up and say, hey, me, take a look at me. <laughs> yeah. I think that really is the key to it. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't box yourself in. Think outside of the box. box. Be be bigger than, than your box. It's a tiny box. <laughs> <laughs> tiny box. The squeaky wheel yeah. gets the grease. That's powerful. That's powerful. I'm talking about getting your voice in the world, right? It wasn't mine. A casting director named Molly Finn, uh, who was uh, Sarah Haley Finn's uh, mother, uh, who does all the Marvel stuff. I was almost cast as the role of Robin in the movie Batman Forever when they were looking for a younger Robin and Molly Finn was the casting director. And she told me after my second callback, Daniel, I always want you to remember this. It's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. I want your head shot on my desk in five years. I was like, oh, okay, sure. And that's... <laughs> That's stuck with me ever since. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And again, it's meeting the people who are doing the things and saying those things. And you're like, wait, what? Oh, I get it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, cool. So cool. Well, a couple more questions. Um, oh, all right. Uh, uh, what is what is your daily, daily VO practice or what is a typical VO day for you? I know you said it's really busy right now. It, it is busy. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy about it. it. It varies from day to day. I really don't have a set routine because my days are different every single day. I might wake up and have like 15 auditions that I've got to get to. And that's my day. I wake up, I brush my teeth, I eat some food, I do my auditions, I go to sleep. Um, other days I have some time. Maybe I'll have one audition to get to or I have some emails to get to, or I have paperwork to do. I mean, I'm running a business. Mm-hmm. So uh, I have to take care of my business. I have to take care of uh, my social media uh, following and, and contribute to that. And uh, obviously take care of myself. So go for a walk, clear my head, do some meditation, uh, eat some good food, uh, hang out with my bird buddy. Oh, uh, your bird buddy, so I sweet. forgot about him. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I wish he could join us, but he would have been noisy the whole time. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He's a little love. And yeah, I'm a bird person. I grew up with dogs and birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you fit sessions in there too, right? Are you That's doing right. Sessions? That's right. When, when those are fortunate enough to come about. Yes, I fit the, the sessions in there too. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, that's- I would say those usually take priority. And if I'm exhausted, if if I cannot even, I may skip a couple auditions, you know, if if I need to. Because mm-hmm. there will be more. There will be more. Right. There are things <laughs> that I passed on and it's like, oh, why did I pass on that? I could have booked that. I could have nailed that. But I needed my rest. If yeah. I hadn't rested, I might have gotten sick. And then I wouldn't have been able to record for a week to two weeks. So I might as well take care of myself. Yeah, yeah. All right, last question. Knowing what you know now, what would you say to yourself at the beginning of your career? (sighs) Younger me getting started in my career? Uh, Do it now, don't wait. Mm. Do it now, don't wait. I I waited so long Mm. and 
you know, look, I, I, I've been fortunate to find what modicum of success that I have, but I'm certain based on what everyone has told me, you know, five, 10 years sooner, it might have even been a different different kind of uh, uh, game altogether. Like I might have been in a different position, but I waited. I waited because I had life to deal with. I had friends and family and a job and uh, all of that out in Maryland. And here I'm dreaming about Los Angeles. And it took a series of life events for me to eventually make that leap. But I, I hemmed and hawed the whole time. And anytime someone said, you got to be in L.A., I'd be like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But life, but life. And mm -hmm. I just had to make that decision that it's my life. And YOLO, you only live once. So you might as well try. And before I left Maryland, I was uh, in the process of uh, getting things together to run for state Congress because I wanted to jump into politics. Yeah. And then I said, no, I'm going to be selfish and I'm going to go do silly voices for a living. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you, you, you've you definitely found a way to have a positive impact. Um, and the way politics are now, probably pretty much the same, right? Probably for the best. Probably for the best. <laughs> the cartoon character goes to politics. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, this has been a fantastic 21 questions. We're so Thank excited you. to have you here and uh, I'm looking forward to having you answering more questions on Ask the Sensei coming up and come back anytime. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, if anybody wants to follow me, uh, you can follow yes, me yes, at yes. Daniel Ross across social media. Uh, I do offer voiceover coaching. If anybody wants to work with me, you can book me through my website. Again, that's actordanielross.com <laughs> and my social media, Actor Daniel Ross. I've made it easy for you. So please do follow me. And don't forget everybody, uh, fear is the antithesis of creativity. If you mm -hmm. remove fear and those obstacles from your life, there's nothing you can't accomplish. Take it from me. <laughs> or no, whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so good, Daniel. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you.